I read books and sometimes I love those books, but sometimes I wonder what kind of books does the person who wrote this one like? So before Instagram makes me pay for a verification badge, I thought might as well use it and see if I can get any authors to respond to me on Instagram. They get to recommend anything to me and I have to read it. It's time for me to DM some authors. The one that I have DM'd the most in my lifetime is Lynn Painter who wrote Better Than The Movies and The Do-Over and she put my name and y'all's name in the acknowledgements of this book. So she's really the only one I'm confident will respond to me. So let's shoot her a DM. Hi Lynn. I wanted to do a video where authors choose what book I should read. So if you could choose any book for me to read, what would it be? Send. One of my other favorite authors is Olivia Blake who wrote The Atlas Six, which is like a fantasy magical realism that went very viral on TikTok as well as Alone With You in the Ether also went viral on TikTok. So I'll send one to her. Christina Lauren, actually two authors. They've written The Unhoneymooners. Love in other words, tons of viral book talk books. I'll ask them. I will ask Emily Henry. One time I responded to her story, OMG, and she double tapped it, but she's much more famous now. So I'll send one to her, but I'm not too hopeful on that one. Same with Colleen Hoover. She has said, wow, thanks so much in 2021, but she has also absolutely blown up since then. I'll also ask Tahara Mafi, who wrote the Shatter Me series, read that entire thing and absolutely loved it. Stephanie Garber, who wrote the Caraval trilogy and the Once Upon a Broken Heart duology, which is, the duology is like a six star read for me. And then Gabrielle Zevin, because I just read Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow in my previous video and absolutely loved it. So I sent them out. I basically said the same thing to everyone. <laughs> and now we just hope for some responses. Okay, it's like two hours later. I have two responses from three Oh, that's very confusing because the first one is Christina Lauren, which is actually two authors and they wrote one of my all-time favorite books Which is love and other words. They didn't actually send a recommendation yet But they asked me what kinds of books I like and I said romance fantasy general fiction anything honestly So they said they're gonna think of a few so that is so exciting I was honestly kind of shocked that they responded because they're kind of blowing up. And then Stephanie Garber responded. She wrote the Once Upon a Broken Heart duology. And these two books are some of my favorites of all time. And she actually sent me book recommendations. So she said, I have quite a few favorites. One of my all time favorite YA fantasies is A Kiss of Deception by Mary Pearson. The love triangle is amazing. A recent adult fantasy favorite is Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies. This book is charming and delightful and very cozy. So that's insane, which is awesome because one of my other favorite duologies ever is Dance of Thieves and Val of Thieves by Mary E. Pearson. And A Kiss of Deception, I think is the same world, but it's a different story. And a lot of you guys have told me to read it because you guys know that I love these two books. So now that Stephanie Garber herself has told me to read A Kiss of Deception, I think I actually need to go to the bookstore and start reading it. So I downloaded it on my Kindle and I'm on chapter five. And I already love the way that the book was set up because basically we're following a princess who is supposed to get married. It feels a little bit dystopian at the beginning, which I just love those types of books. That's like how I started reading in middle school. So you just are suddenly following this princess who's supposed to marry this old guy and she doesn't want to do that. So she runs away. And then you actually get the POV of the prince that she was supposed to marry. I think I'm a little confused because he doesn't seem as old as she was describing him. So it could be different people. I'm not clear on that yet. And then you also get the perspective of an assassin who's out to kill the princess. It's very interesting so far. And I really like the setup and I've already read two Mary E. Pearson books and this writing, obviously same person wrote it. So I like the writing style a lot. And I'm just excited that this video is making me read this book because I just don't know when I would have picked it up. And I was thinking about how cool this video is because I love the books that Stephanie Garber wrote. So the ones that she loves, I will probably also like. So it's just a good way to find books that I like. Hello, Babas. I just landed in California and I'm staying with Brie. I think I got from 30% of the book to 65% of the book. So I think I should tell you what I think about it. I think I've decided from this reading experience, any book that's over 400 pages, I just want to read on the Kindle because it feels so much faster than holding a book that makes your neck hurt. It's definitely very similar to Dance of Thieves and Vow of Thieves. But if you don't love fantasy, I feel like you'll definitely find writing like this boring. I love this kind of fantasy though, which is kind of surprising to me because it is a lot of them on a long trek on some horses. But but the stakes are high. Like her life is on the line. Assassins are looking for her. She has betrayed her entire kingdom that she came from. It's high stakes 
And I think I like stuff like that actually, but there's also romance. I think it's a love triangle is what Stephanie Garber told me in the DM. You get to see a little bit of the perspective from the assassin and this other guy. And we just got a big reveal. So I understand more now. I don't know if I was supposed to understand that earlier in the book and maybe I'm a little late catching up on this, but everything is a surprise to me when I read because I purposely turn off my brain to have a fun experience. And I love just getting surprised. I don't like to try to guess. I just let the book take me where it goes, you know? And it's more fun like that for me. I'm really liking the book, but I'm not obsessed like I was with Dance of Thieves and Vow of Thieves, but it's definitely the same author. And it's definitely a vibe that I kind of, it's kind of like a comfort read to me, even though it's not considered cozy fantasy because it's very high stakes. It feels very comforting to read a book like this. I got back home from California and on the planes, I basically finished The Kiss of Deception by Mary E. Pearson, which was recommended to me by Stephanie Garber. And it's actually cool that this video kind of shows author's favorite books and maybe if they got inspired by those books to write what they write, because I could definitely see how she would feel inspired after reading fantasy books like this to write what she wrote. Her style is obviously very different, but it was mostly a fantasy book with a romance subplot, which is what Stephanie Garber did as well. This review is gonna make me a little bit sad because while I was reading it, I thought I was gonna rate it really highly because you guys already know I love this author. Gave five stars to the Dance of Thieves duology and this is set in the same world. And at first I thought this is gonna be up there with them. And then the entire book kind of became this goose hunt for them to find the princess or assassinate the princess. And they're like on horses the entire time. And I just thought like the setting would change possibly or something else would happen, but it's just that the entire book basically. And so it kind of fell flat for me, but I read a bunch of reviews on Goodreads and people were kind of saying the same thing about the first book, but then the second second book after this one, people have raving reviews about it because I think the love triangle starts actually happening a bit more. And I believe them. Like I do believe that if I were to continue the series, I could possibly give the next book a five stars because I think it's setting up for something great. But this first book just wasn't really, it really felt like a starter book. It didn't really feel like the actual meat of the story. So I'm going to give it three stars. It actually makes a lot of sense that Stephanie Garber recommended this book. And I could see why she did because she probably read all of the books in the series and loves the series. So next up we have Olivia Blake who responds and she gave quite a few recommendations and all of them are the most out of my comfort zone. The Neapolitan Novels by Elena Ferrante, White Teeth by Zadie Smith, If I Had Your Face by Francis Cha, Fault Lines by Emily Itami, Itami, Light from Uncommon Stars by Rika Aoki. So the genres are kind of all over the place and I read the synopses of all of these books and the one that looks the most intriguing to me is If I Had Your Face by Francis Cha. I feel like I've heard Jack Edwards or somebody on YouTube talk about this book, but it's a literary fiction and it's about the crazy high beauty standards in Korea and how all of her friends are getting plastic surgery. So I started it last night on the Kindle. I've really been using this thing in my videos if you haven't noticed. Olivia Blake definitely recommended the most unique choices. So this is gonna be interesting. <laughs> Okay, guys, I have bad news for you. I think I'm gonna DNF, AKA not finish, if I had your face, which is unexpected for me because literary fiction is out of my comfort zone, but every time that I have read it, I've almost, almost always loved it. And I really expected to like this one because I like the topics that I was touching on, but I was trying to think about why I do not like this book. I don't feel attached to any of the characters. And then I was thinking about why do I even read? And for me, it's entertainment. And if it's literary fiction, when I read Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow, I loved the writing style and it elicited such strong emotions from me while I read it and it was entertaining. And with this book, it feels more like I should be having moments where the author is amazing me with her commentary on beauty standards and just life in Korea. And we're not really having any of those moments, honestly. And like I said, I don't like any of the characters and this is really just you following four different characters and I don't feel attached to any of them. So this year I've realized I want to commit to not forcing myself to read books if I'm not liking them. Cause in my brain in the past, it's like I've already made it 45% through this book. I'm halfway done. I should just spend like two or three more hours finishing the book. But then once I finish it, I already know I'm gonna say I didn't like the book very much. Well, you never know for sure unless you finish it. But I think so far, if I had to say, I wouldn't enjoy the book, meaning I wouldn't ever recommend the book, meaning I would probably forget that I even read it in the first place. And I don't think I will have walked away having learned something or been better for reading it. So for those purposes, I'm going to try to spend more of my time this year reading books I know I'm gonna be obsessed with so that I can recommend them to you or else kind of wasting both of our times here. So I'm DNFing it. I'm making a grand speech because I never 
DNF books. I've definitely done it, but I'm more of like a power through even if you don't like it type of person when it comes to books. And I'm going to, I think, just test out the version of myself where I don't do that and see if I just get more five star reads this year in a less amount of time, which is always the goal is just to read more books that you like. I bought a physical copy of If I Had Your Face before DNFing it, so maybe I'll finish it still, I don't know yet. And my next read is Billy Summers by Stephen King, recommended to me by Lynn Painter, one of my favorite authors of all time. And I've also never read a Stephen King book, so I'm very excited to read this. It's not horror, she said, which is great because I don't want to read horror. It's mystery thriller, I think. This is a nice paperback as well. I have my coffee order, and it's day two of reading Stephen King's Billy Summers. The synopsis is that Billy Summers gets hired to snipe people, but he only does it if he considers them a bad person. And he's gonna retire until he gets one last offer that he just can't refuse and everything goes wrong, apparently. That's all on the back of the book. Bach only starts chewing his bone when I record, it's so funny. I'm 100 pages in and it's really fun because he kind of has to camp out in this house for a while before it takes place and they want him to pretend to be an author while he's waiting. So he decides to actually start writing a book about his own life and his sort of traumatic past and he's actually always wanted to be a writer. So he actually really enjoys the job and I always love books where there's writers in the books. So my first Stephen King, I really like it. I think I can tell that he's a seasoned author. He clearly knows what he's doing. He can write dialogue and characters very well and I'm really enjoying it. I think I have like 400 pages more, so let's keep reading. Guys, Colleen Hoover saw my DM. Did she respond? No, but she did see it. Guys, I just finished it. This book was 514 pages. And at the start, you know, I just, I was reading good writing, but that's mostly it. And then we meet a new character and the relationship we follow from there just, it carved me out by the end of it. Oh my gosh, the end was so good. I thought I was gonna cry. I was reading in front of other people, but if I was by myself, there was definitely risk of crying at the end of this. I don't know what to rate this book because it's so out of my realm of normal reading and I haven't really read anything else in the genre, so I don't have much to compare it to. And I also have to say again, very dark themes in this book. Also, it's really funny that Lynn Painter is the one who recommended this book because her books are like the lightest, fluffiest things in the world and this is the darkest book. <laughs> Not that I've ever read, but it's definitely up there. She said it was out of her comfort zone as well and she just randomly picked it up, but definitely my favorite book that I read in this video. I am thinking 4.5 possibly even five stars for this book. It was so good. This one was a DNF. All of the books that Olive Blake recommended were the most out of my comfort zone. And then The Kiss of Deception was the most in my comfort zone, but I rated it three stars. And that one definitely makes the most sense that Stephanie Garber recommended it. But I'm so glad that this video brought me to my first Stephen King read and it was so good. Christina Lauren never actually recommended me of any books. So maybe for episode two, maybe y'all can get back to me. <laughs> I'll see you guys on my Instagram or somewhere else on the internet. Thanks for watching this. I love you so much. <laughs>